I already did a video on Subori that you can go check it out here if you would like to go deeper into the elements of Subori. Today it will be more about building yourself up. I'm going to do this by breaking down Subori into three different ways of doing it and the purpose will be to build faster swing, a stronger movement and just overall creating stability so we can perform better during our regular practice. I hope you enjoyed this. My name is Jose, I am a Godan in Kendo and this is Kendo Tips. If you could, please leave down in your comments, how do you do your subori? What is your main focus when you do it? You can just leave it down in the comments below or you can pass by one of my streams during the weekend. You can come watch Kendo together with me and ask any questions or give me any comments on any other stuff. Subori is the main tool that we have to use at home to improve our Kendo. And our personal practice is as important as going to the dojo, especially if you're looking to make steady progress. Many people see subori as a physical exercise that you just go through the motion. Subori is particularly good at helping us understand how to control the shinai, the grip of the sore, the synchronization, and stability of our body. And I would like for you to keep in mind all of these aspects when you do your subori. Maybe not at the same time, but do keep in mind. And this specifically is what we're going to work today. Normally I like to leave kind of like the warnings or the bad things for the end. Maybe you don't want to hear it, so I'm just going to put it right here. Please, don't try to go fast at first. If you do the motion slow, it allows you to engage the muscles much more. It's more difficult to create control. So you're challenging your body in a different way. And then your body will learn what muscles and how they're being engaged to then use them to do a better, stronger, faster swing. Also, we are avoiding bad habits. Avoid hitting too hard. Yes, we do want a fast swing, but we don't want to hit too hard in the sense we don't want to add power after the cut. You should do your tenochi and then then right at that moment, stop putting force into your sword. Allow your fingers and wrists to relax so that way you can do your next technique. You also want to avoid over swinging. But again, I guess this also relates to start slow. Last one, it's start with short steps. I know we're always trying to get a better reach, to use do longer steps, but I feel that sometimes, actually most times, short steps are underrated. You want to learn how to do the motions with proper support with your legs. With shorter steps, you will develop the coordination, you will develop the engagement of your legs, and then to transition this into the longer steps. You want to be able to move further or shorter just the same way using your left leg to push you and your right leg to pull you not to bring you up anyways let's start with the most basic first you're in command step one you lift your sword step two you step forward by pushing yourself with the back leg and on step three you cut down as you snap your back leg forward At this point, you should end up pretty much in Kamae, but with your arms extended. Now, let's break it down. For your first step, when you lift your sword, be mindful of your back being straight. You don't want to be arching your back or you don't want to be leaning forward. You also want to make sure that both of your hands are above your head. Not in front, not behind, just right above your head. The arms specifically, do not lock them up, but also don't bend them. Have both arms up, and what I like to do is ringing up in such a way that I feel my side muscles being stretched, so it reminds me to engage them to bring the sword down. For the second step, push your right leg forward with your left leg. The right leg moves because the left one is pushing. Kind of a little bit of an image that you can have in your head. It's like, you know those things in the subway that rolls to go through? Imagine that you are going to go through one of those that's kind of stuck and you cannot use your hands, you're using your core for it. This kind of feeling is what you want to be thinking of. You push with your left leg, connecting your whole body to move forward and it's what's gonna create that connected and stable motion. Now bring your sword down as you snap your left foot forward. You want to end the cut with the sword at the same time that your left leg is landing back into that kamae position. And by the way, make sure you engage that leg again as if you're going to take another step. You should be able to do another technique, whether it's forward or backwards, without adjusting yourself. As I said before, your arms should be extended forward. Your left hand should be right in front of your solar plexus. The right arm should be pretty much parallel to the floor and the tip of your sword should be trying to stretch out forward to the opponent rather than up. Right after you finish your cut, you want to relax your fingers and your wrist. So after the cut, there might be a little bit of a pullback when you do the relaxation, but it shouldn't be that you pull the sore 
up. Now, when you swing, you want to stop your sword by squeezing your fingers and extending your wrist. This is a very basic way of talking about Tenouchi. I already made a video about that. Don't worry, I'll make more. But you want to understand that right after you do this, you're going to relax. You're not going to keep the tension in your fingers, but your arms should still be extended forward. Don't pull them back. Please start slow. The longer you make these motions, the more you're helping your body understand the movement that you're doing. You're also challenging your stability. Build up the speed as you feel more confident with the motions but make sure that you don't go too fast too soon as you develop your speed you also want to start developing your reach make sure that you are always pushing with your left leg as you move through the motion the longer you step the more that left leg has to push and the more effort you have to put and make sure that it all moves together that's also a very basic description of fumikiri ideally you want to make sure that you provide the stability with the left leg pushing you forward and the right leg is going to pull you forward rather than bringing you up. You want to make sure that you don't lose height as you move forward. This first ability is the basis of pretty much everything that I'm going to be talking about today. So keep all these elements in mind and move up to the next level once you feel comfortable that you can do all this fluid. The only difference for the next ability is that we're going to raise or soar at the same time that we're pushing our right leg forward. Now, this can be very challenging, especially if you do it long and slow, holding your weight and keeping your stability as you move with your hands up. It's a little bit of an acro motion, but it will help you understand how much more engagement you need to have with your left leg, keep the support. The right leg, remember, is not gonna bring you up, it's going to pull you forward, so make sure that you do this with a continuous motion forward. As you progress, focus on doing a sharp motion with balance and relaxing after each cut. Also, avoid doing smaller cuts or smaller swings because now you have less time to bring the sword up and down. Do a full cut just like you were doing before. If you do all your subutis with energy, with this focus, at the dojo and at home, you're gonna start seeing progress. The last way of doing subuti, it's a little bit more challenging, but I think it's the one that relates more to what we would use during keiko. And it's to move your right leg forward and start your swing at the very last moment possible. Start the motion with your legs first, and then your hands have to catch up to the motion that you already started. We're gonna have much less time to do the swing, so the swing has to be fast and sharp. It's important that we create a good habits and a good swing by the point we're here. So don't try to rush into this one. Please. But most importantly, you need to be conscious of relaxing your upper body until the very last second. Now, the reason why I said that this subuti is the one that will relate more to our regular jigeiko is because this is kind of what you want to do as as you're approaching the opponent. You want to approach the opponent with your feet, relaxing your upper body to not let them know your intentions, and then engage in your technique at the very last moment possible. If you watch Small Man, this is the same concept of how you approach it. You approach it with your feet first and then your hands catch up. So now we're doing what most people don't do, making our hands catching up with our body rather than our body or our legs catching up with our hands. As many people just want to attack so quick that their body has to catch up. They don't really engage the lower body. I mean, I don't know if you can see the big benefits that you can get out of just thinking about it this way. And by the way, always follow your sentence instruction. I don't want you to ignore what your sentence says because of some dude in inch. I know I've been saying a lot, but I couldn't stress enough the importance of engaging your legs properly. Here with this ability, we're training stability we're training speed, we're training control of the shinai, sharp motions, all those things. I think this subuti is very beneficial, but you also want to make sure that you're doing it properly. Also, remember that momentum is a great thing. We want to utilize momentum to help us do better, but you also want to challenge yourself of not using the momentum so we can build up ourselves and just so we can have more stable and stronger performance. Also, with this last subuti, you start kind of touching into the physical aspects of how to approach we start training our body to not just attacking, just engaging into the technique, but instead approaching and putting pressure to our opponent. I think that's very beneficial during practice. I honestly could talk about this whole day. I would like to talk to you more about this. So you are welcome to pass by one of my streams during the weekend. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe.
subscribe to the channel and put the notification bell on. That way you will know when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you found any value from this video, please hit the like button and share it with somebody else. Thank you very much for watching and let's keep practicing strong and let's get better together. Oh,